este for the church say amen amen for the church say amen again amen. this is the day that the lord has made i shall be glad we shall rejoice and be glad in it yes, uh, this morning i want to say happy anniversary pastor God bless you. Yeah. this is your flock you shall lead it for the next 14 years and the next 14 after that I want to thank God for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way. I wouldn't be here without him. And I want to thank my mom for being the transportation. I can't drive yet, but I'll show you. I won't keep you here for long, but for a minute, I want you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Say amen when you get it. Say hold up if you need a minute. First Peter chapter 5, verses 2 through 4 reads as, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fade not away. You may be. Bible says the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall and will stand forever. And as we know, the man of God is given a very daunting and peculiar task in shepherding God's people. We who serve as the under shepherd and the overseer have a very fragile and valuable position because anytime you are taking care of someone else's property, you must handle it with care. And contrary to popular belief, these are not our people, but they are God's people and should be handled with care. Now, with the chaos that accompanies this vocation, it is very easy to become reclusive and frustrated. But in these moments, you must remember who called you. You have been appointed to this house, this flock to be used, which implies work for the edification of the body of Christ. Again, the pastor is a gift, not a gift lacking like it's a fine, charming, remains polished on sometimes on display and used for special occasions. But rather, the pastor is a gift like it to an everyday working to, like a lawnmower, pushed by everyone, does most of the work in order to make the house look good. The pastor is like it to an attorney, often taking a little bit of mess from everybody, just to make sure that nobody or no one gets back up. We have got work to do. We are not here to be celebrities because soon we'll have fine cars, tailor suits, and well manicured hands. But we ought to be shepherds involved in the care of his sheep. And if we take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. You ain't gotta beat nobody over the head and ask them for nothing. If you feed them right, good God Almighty, God promise he'll take care of you. And it doesn't matter what you're dealing with personally. You still have the responsibility to forget about yourself and attend to God's people. The shepherd doesn't have the privilege of sleeping on the job. Because if the shepherd is asleep, the Bible declares that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The deacon can sleep on the first day, but pastor, you got to stay awake because there is an after sight coming in like a roaring lion. And you got to be awake if you're going to fight this devil. The shepherd does not have the privilege of calling in sick because there might be a sick sheep that needs the penicillin of God's word. And if you, and if the pastor is sick and the sheep are sick, you have a sick church. We must put our personal issues on the side and tend to God's people. Yes, we all face our own demons. Don't be so quick to judge the pastor. We all have our own demons to fight. I don't want you to think the man of God is perfect. We all have our own demons. It's a sad thing that we hold the pastors to a standard that we're not willing to live. If you cannot hold yourself to the same standard, don't hold the preacher to the same standard. Don't judge the preacher because he called him slipping one Sunday. Because some of y'all slipping every Sunday. We just ain't saying nothing. 
No matter what you got, no matter what you're going through, you gotta preach anyhow. You gotta serve anyhow. They don't know how on Sunday mornings, you, how, they don't know how you go to sleep crying, but Sunday morning you got to get up with joy in your heart because they're counting on you. They don't know how on Sunday morning the devil attacked you, but you got to preach anyhow because they're counting on you. We've got work to do. The shepherd must be on his place. And always remember the responsibility must be done by the shepherd and not the sheep. I found out, Pastor Andrew, I haven't been finished in long. But I discovered that there are some sheep in front of me. I didn't call them. They haven't been finished. shepherd is responsible for three things. Yes, care, custody, and control. All right. The text says, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, which is the money, but yes. already mine. Feed the flock of God means take care of what you got, and God was in the rest. Yes. Too often we worrying about this church and how they got this many members, and we're worrying about the shirt that's drawn the street. But if you take care of what you got, some may do the planting and some may do the water, but God will do the increasing if you're faithful to him. Oh, we got some hating preachers. They worrying about Paul, Martin, T.D. Jakes, and Frank Lodato, and how who got this. If you do what they do, you can get where they got. Baby, work with what you got. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Take care of what you got. Taking the oversight, not by constraint. Not because you're called to do it, but because you love to do it. Many of us try to do this job because we think it's glamorous. You sit in the big chair, they see your tailor suits and all that, but they don't know what you put up, that you put up with hell in order to sit in the big chair. They see your tailor suits and all that, but they don't know the stuff you did with to get to where you got. And you can't do the job for money. Can I tell y'all a little secret? Little bit of money that we make, it ain't all that, but the God we serve. He promised to be Jehovah Jireh. He promised to be Jehovah Nisi. We can't depend on Negro to pay your salary because they flake it. On. Yeah, Ty, one my bro, Ty, the next one. On. You got to trust in God with all your heart. Now if you feel the Luca butter the ready mind, need to be in Lord over God's heritage. Again, this is God's people. And some of us think that it's our folks. This ain't God, people. As long as you get that in your mind, you'll never get out of place. Yes, sir. And I'm so tired of hearing preachers say this is my church and my people. If you think this is your church and your people, die. I guarantee you they're going to get a committee. They're going to vote for someone. They're going to put them in. They're going to eat chicken and forget your name. This is God's people, and when you treat them like God's people, I found out that you can take care of them better when you realize that they're God's people and not your property. Come on, that's all right, brother. That's but being examples to the flock, the work we do should be examples to the flock. Yes. When the parishioner sees his pastor, they should be motivated to do better. That's right. There should be a motivation. See, real leaders don't create followers, but they create more leaders. There you go, boy. There you go. We so busy trying to get folk to fall in love, that fall in love with us, that we forgot to fall in love with Jesus. But I found out when you fall in love with Jesus, it's something that the Holy Ghost does in the church. When we come to church with our minds stayed on Jesus, we ain't come to see what you got on, we ain't come to see what you look like, but we came for Jesus. He woke us up this morning, he started us on that way, and the pastor don't got to preach, I don't care who preached, but I came for Jesus. Yes, sir. Being examples. You have to be an example to God's people. Yes. When it's time to give, the preacher got to be the best giver. Yes, Tyler going to church when they ask for the offering, the preacher don't dig in his pocket. My Lord. Yes, Lord, Jesus. <laughs> you don't gotta, you gotta be there when nobody else is there. Yes, the Bible says, if you're faithful over a few, he'll make you rule over yes, many. Yes, the responsibility is upon the sheep. That's upon the the shepherd, not the sheep. Jesus asked Peter a question. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my lamb. He didn't ask the sheep nothing. He asked the shepherd. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And when
when the shepherd loves, Jesus, he take care of the sheep. Even the ones that don't like you, you got to go see about them too. When one's sick and in the hospital, you got to go to the hospital and say, Jesus, touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And I heard David say, he'll make your enemy. And if you love him long enough, he'll be the, the one that don't like you, be your biggest supporter. I heard, I wish I had a church. I heard David say, he'll make your enemies your footstool. He'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Keep on working. All right, all right. Finally, the Bible says that when the chief shepherd shall appear. Yes, sir. Don't forget that you are the under shepherd. Yes, we are sent for the sheep leading other sheep. Yes, sir. But when the chief shepherd shall appear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, you don't have to worry about receiving everything down here. Because like I said, focus flaky. One year you get $100,000 for your anniversary. Yes, sir. Next year, Come on. <laughs> time is filled with strip transition. But when the chief shepherd shall appear, yes, you do know who he is, right? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, we're not talking about David, but we're talking about Jesus. See, Jesus came, he died, but he promised he was coming back, and when he shall come, he said he's going to place one foot upon the quaking earth and one foot upon the troubled sea. Yes. When he shall come, he shall have risen on his vesture and his star, King of kings and Lord of lords. When he shall come, he shall bless the sky, the day and night shall rise. When he shall come, come, go and come to church every Sunday. Come on. But he able to hold on to Jesus when the chief shepherd shall appear. Yes, sir. He'll give you a crown. And I'm glad that all my rewards don't come from man. Yes, sir. All right. All right, boy. Talk, talk. The God that has gave stuff to me, Pastor Andrews. The Bible says, your eyes have not seen. Yes, sir. Your ears have not heard. Yeah, yeah. Keep preaching. Yes, so you fill this house. Yes, sir. Then you have another service. Yes, sir. You fill that one. And that gets too much, build something bigger. But yes. keep preaching. Be instant in season and be instant out of season. Yes, sir. You don't have to preach Monday coming. All right. You don't have to preach name and acclaim. Yes, sir. You don't have to preach yes. Pauling and Pauling. But I heard yes, the Bible say on. one Friday evening, yes, way out on Calvary, uh -huh. he died yes, until the moon went down in blood. Yes, he died until the sun turned black like a thousand midnights. He died until the groundhogs ran their holes. He died until the birds flew to the nest. He died. The soldier says, Charlotte, this must be the son of God. I heard they placed him into a borrowed tomb. I heard Friday, Paul Saturday, and so Saturday I held him long as I could. But now it's your turn. I heard Saturday told Friday, you had him like you want him. But now I'm going to do what I want with him. I heard Saturday call Sunday and said Sunday I tried to hold him. Sunday said I got up early this morning. But when I went to the tomb, nobody was there. He promised Early, early, early. Sunday morning, he was gonna get up with power. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Barely carried my sins far away. We got work to do. Work by the day. Cause when night coming, no man can work. Work. I hear the hemologist say. Yes, sir. I'm going to my seat. The mom just says, be from heaven as I go through this wilderness, wilderness below. Guide my feet in peaceful ways and turn my midnights into day. My favorite part says, I do not know how long, how long, how long, how long is going to be of what my future Holds for me, but all I know, if Jesus goes with me, I'll carry it home, I'll carry it home one day. One of these old mornings won't be very long. You go look for me, but I'll be going home. I'm going, I'm going. Yes, sir. 